previously on Life in a Four Wheel Drive. I don't know, I never really hear anyone talk about Cape Melville, so that's uh, that's where we're going to hit first. Gonna... And Cooktown is 180 kilometres away, apparently. So that was well, pretty well a day and a half. So we've got, yeah, 16 k's to Ninian Bay Campground, and then we're currently 200 k's from the closest fuel station. It may be that we end up having to turn around before we even get to Ninian Bay Campground. So the end decision was we're still going to head to Ninian Bay. Yeah, we'll have enough. Yeah, we're, we're only 16 k's from Ninian Bay. It's just used a lot more doing such distances in low, low range. range. Yeah, it just used way more than I had thought. What did we work out then? We've done about 200 k's just over and we've used probably about 75 litres, we think, roughly. roughly. Yeah. <laughs> it's a fair bit. Especially with the price of fuel at the moment. So... Yes, we're going to go to Ninian Bay, but we have planned to spend some time around Lakefield and stuff, which we'll probably still do. We'll just have to go back out to... to fuel up and come back in. Fuel up and come back in. Probably not showing up on the GoPro how I want it to, but the track to Ninian Bay is pretty gnarly. It's just a goat track. It doesn't look like anyone drives it north at all. Well, we saw two cars driving in, but they must be up at like the. There's, yeah, there's, yeah. yeah, there's two campgrounds at Cape Melville. <laughs> Hopefully, this isn't an omen that it's the one that people don't go to. Yeah. <laughs> you can definitely tell that we're exploring the um, lesser known areas of the Cape York Peninsula. <laughs> Shane's on his night 10th hour. You'll be coming into your 10th hour now <laughs> of driving. So it just got to the point where it's like we like we would normally have pulled up and set up camp about now, but we're so close. When I changed HEMA to our on-road navigation to go to the campground, it said we were about 10 minutes ago, it said we were 40 minutes away. So I, said, so I was like, we may as well just try and get there today. So tomorrow can hopefully just be a relaxed day. Unless this, this place turns out to be crap. Yeah, we've got zero information on the place. So. I think we're starting to learn like the kind of things we need to research, like check in and see if it's open or not. Well, we've, we've, like, I'm sure I googled it back like, at some stage. Yeah. Because we're, we're using the HEMA for a lot of our planning. Because we got the new HEMA HX2. Which... Which is good for planning. But yeah, you, usually you couple that with Google for your national park campsites, which I'm sure I had. We researched this part we were going to do a little while ago now, a couple yeah. weeks ago, so it's kind of all gone from our memory. But, I don't know, I've got a good feeling, like this, out of these trees, I've got a good feeling. <laughs> just this whole thing, it just feels like, exciting. <laughs> Ridiculous. There's like literally like nearly taking our arms off out the windows, taking stuff off the top. Getting denser and denser. It's going to be the best damn campsite <laughs> we've ever been to. Yeah. A lot of campsites along the east coast of Australia. Could you call it the most remote? Could you say that? I don't know if it's the most remote. It's in the middle of nowhere. It's just hard to get to. Mm. In the face of two very tired kitties, 
We got there. We did get there. In time for the sun to set. We had a beautiful night's sleep. It may have been an absolute nightmare to get here, but there's literally no one else here. So, plan of attack for the next couple of days is just to relax, fish, crab, and boat. So, and there's lots of oyster shells around, so we're hoping we might be able to get a few oysters. So, Ninian Bay has a swamp right behind it, and like literally like this is probably the start of the swamp. You can see where like all the trees and stuff are that we think where the swamp is. You're not allowed to go onto it because it is, yeah, it's, we, it's Aboriginal, kind of like sacred land. They've just said because of cultural reasons. So only the elders are allowed on it or people with special permission. So you're pretty much only allowed on the campground and along the, like the campground is essentially along the front of the beach. So, but apparently, because there is swamp there, there's quite a few crocs in the area. Like literally, I don't know if you can see behind, but camp is literally there. And Shane just literally wandered down to the bottom of camp. Quick to line in. Yeah, it's the Trevally, so not the best, obviously in the world, but put him in a curry. How'd you go? Did you catch any more? No, nah, heaps of bites. Uh, something big had a grab on it. Bites don't feed us though, Shane, no? That's true, they don't. There's lots of barracuda and stuff. Oh yeah.
one first. Yeah. You have the honours, Shane. Good. Oh, big day. Big day. So, what have you been up to today? Uh, I walked up and down this beach about 15 times. <laughs> Went for a fish there this morning, fish there this morning, crab pots in before. Went back there to get some oysters. Check the crab pots. Yeah, done lots of them. It's been good. Yeah. What fishes have you caught? Uh, we got a little trevally. That was pretty good. Like, like a little cod, but nothing too serious. Mm. Yeah. So, um, and then obviously Shane took me back to where all the oysters were so we could have an oyster lunch feast. Yeah, it was good, eh? It was so good. Delicious. You can probably hear, or you would have heard on the GoPro, the wind is kicking up, but when you're, as soon as you're tucked up in our little campsite, it's like a nice breeze then that keeps you cool so we're finding it's like quite still in the mornings bit of a breeze but then as the day goes on it gets windier and windier so we're thinking we'll get the boat in the water in the morning but now we're gonna have curry trevally for dinner should be good so we threw a few crab pots out throughout the day what well, we this guy did. <laughs> um, no luck with the crab pots so far. Shane is having a go at making damper in the fire. Yeah, doing it the traditional way. Yeah, so we'll see how this one goes and then if we manage to get down power, we'll, we'll vlog it one day. It's so nice to finally be at campsites that are like what we'd envision staying at. So Ninian Bay. As you come into the campsite, there's a first spot on the left, which has a little, you can see it, a little fireplace already set up. It's got heaps of shade, but you still get sun in the middle of the day, so you can still get solar. Catch your fish right off the beach, as you saw, we're eating oysters. Hopefully we'll get the boat in the water tomorrow. So if you're into fishing, boating, oysters, or just genuinely hanging out at a beach, great. The only negative, obviously, which is the same as anywhere up here, you can't swim in the ocean. That would probably make it perfect. But I think we've decided it was worth the drive in. The Starcade to Wakuka track was definitely a big one. So maybe come in through Musgrave and Wakuka. I guess now I'll see you in the morning. Go out on the boat, catch lots of fish, stock up the freezer. Yep. Bye. Beautiful morning. The sun has. And we are getting the boat in the water. <laughs> um, yeah, we'll see you on the water. Not the boating adventure we were hoping for. So, I don't think we will be going out on the boat. After much digging and our neighbours even lending us their max tracks, so we've got six pairs of max, well not six pairs, three pairs of max tracks, six max tracks. We're still pretty bogged. So, out comes the recovery kit.
We think it's because the spot where Shane wanted to put the boat in the water was here because there's lots of rocks through there, which meant that he had to reverse it down and come around the corner. And as he's come around the corner, because he's had to rotate, because he kind of needed to come down, skirt down, pull up and then go down. So the sand is very soft. Interesting. Anyway, my job now is to try and dig out some max tracks because there should be six at the moment I can see three. <laughs> How are you feeling? Oh yeah, should be right. We're just going to fish somewhere else. Yeah. The beach. Giving me more editing to do. You'll be right. You're good at it. So we decided because we've already got the trailer hooked up, we've already got the rooftop tent put down, which are like the two quickest things packing up. But nonetheless, um, we're probably just gonna. And well, the whole point of staying the extra day was to get the boat in the water, right? Yeah, we want to go and have a fish. And, yeah. There you are. <laughs> so we're thinking we'll just pack up and go and get fuel and then come back in. So this will probably be the end of this episode, I guess. Thanks for joining us on what has been probably definitely the most interesting adventure we've been on so far. Yeah. If you like this video, which has been different to our others, but what more of them are going to be like, hit the like button. And if you want to see more content like this, which is definitely the content we want to produce for you, um, hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell. But honestly, we do really appreciate everyone that's watching the videos. It's pretty wild that there's a few of the same people tuning in every week bang on time. So um, we appreciate you all and we will see you next week. Catch you. <laughs> I did it for ya.